All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm Martha Alter Hines, and we're here for this exciting topic that I've been <laughs> wanting to talk about, and Tatsy's been wanting to talk about for months. <laughs> um, I think lots of us want to talk about this, which is why we're here. And thank you to everyone listening to the recording, too. Uh, so what we're here to talk about is Saturn and revisioning Saturn um, and coming into a new relationship with Saturn. So there's lots and lots and lots of reasons I feel passionately about this. And yeah, I, I'm going to share my screen. And when I'm sharing my screen, I won't be able to see the chat, but please feel free to um to introduce yourself in the chat if you're here live tell each other where who you are and where you are from and uh if questions come up i would love to have your input and your questions especially once i get toward the end of what i'm going to do i definitely want this to be a conversation not just me talking as an expert it's not how i think of myself so um I think this is a living, breathing conversation of our whole world. And that's my intention for this time together too, including those of you listening to the recording. I would love to hear from you. I would love to have comments. I would love to get emails. So definitely be in touch. Okay. So, so yeah, what I'm going to be focusing on is Saturn as yin, Saturn as Enki, and the potential we have to change our world through a revisioning of the essence of true structure and true inner wisdom. And there's many, many, many layers to what I want to explore with you guys today um so i think most of you know me but for any of you who don't i again am martha alter hines and i <clears throat> i do astrology primarily having studied with ari Moshe wolf a little tiny bit of shamanic astrology and then this year i'm studying with heather ensworth and my background is uh mostly actually as a clinical social worker, psychotherapist, and a body worker. I also am in channeling a series of books. Three of them are published, and they're called the Living the One Light series. And I incorporate astrology. Astrology is just one of the tools I use for my overarching direct soul directive, which is really to be present to hold space for us to all remember that our full consciousness in whatever way is right for each of us in each moment so that we can be present on the planet to help this planet to heal and transform and um, for our own lives to heal and transform. And my, my uh, website is livingtheonelight.com so you can find out more there. Okay. So when I do anything, it is a directive from spirit, the spirit world. So that includes doing these talks. So when I was told, I was told months ago to do a series of talks for EA Zoom. And I was told precisely what topic to do on what dates. <laughs> and I was told months ago to do this talk on Saturn today, March 2nd. So I just went and looked at the transits and, you know, first of all, we all know that next week, March, well, lots of us know that March on March 7th, 2023, Saturn is entering Pisces. So that's, I think, probably the biggest reason I'm being told to do this today. But then I also happen to notice, guess what is conjunct Saturn today? Mercury. <laughs> it's like, really awesome. <laughs> so here we are talking about Saturn and revisioning it. And also, you know, Venus is conjunct Jupiter and Hygieia is conjunct 
Pluto is just, it's a beautiful day to be talking about Saturn. So I just wanted to point that out because I thought that was pretty great. Okay. So yeah, first thing I want to say is in general, in my approach to astrology, in my approach to life, I feel very passionately that all, all of these archetypes, all of these stories that are associated with the archetypes are living, breathing, changing, very powerful stories. And language has incredible power. So I also feel strongly that it is <clears throat> important for us not to take at face value the stories that we attach to planets, asteroids, planetary bodies, and to really drop into what we each feel is truth in like small capital T, big capital T, and also what is going to be the most healing approach to each of these planets. So that's that's kind of the meta perspective I'm coming from when I look at Saturn, but also when I look at anything. Um, so I want to name that. And as I was dropping into how I feel called to speak to Saturn, I was realizing I feel like there's at least, I'm sure there's more, but at least four levels that I feel like we can look at any of these planetary bodies or planets. <clears throat> so the first layer is that most of them are named after Roman or Greek myths, and often the Roman version of a god or god, usually a god. <laughs> so most of the main planets are named after uh, a Roman or Greek god. So we've got that layer of the mythology attached to them. And those stories were created, written, visioned during highly patriarchal times. If we drop, drop back one layer, typically there's going to be a precursor of that Roman or Greek myth, right? So it's like, so that maybe helps us come back to a time that was either pre-patriarchy or in a transitional time between, you know, right as patriarchy was taking hold, but at least it maybe it helps us drop back one layer from the typical Roman or Greek myth that we associate with the planet. And then I feel like then we can go even one layer back or many layers back and re remember that the planet, these planets, are actually planets. <laughs> they actually exist in our solar system. And we have the ability to, in some way, connect with the actual planet or just be with the reality that they are physical beings, just like the earth is a physical being and the sun is a physical being, presence, uh, a vibration. Um, yeah, it, it exists as a physical thing. And then on the ultimate, ultimate, ultimate level, <clears throat> I feel like the, the meaning or the potential healing of each of these archetypes that we talk about in astrology really, you know, comes from source. So if we're able to go layer by layer by layer and release the stories that we associate with the planets, I feel like ultimately the ultimate way to really get to the truth of the moment is to release it back to the divine, which is so much what I feel like is happening as Saturn is about to enter Pisces. So Saturn entering Pisces or anything entering Pisces, I, I feel like is an opportunity for that energetic, that archetype to just for us to just hand it back or it's handing itself back to the divine and we can you know let it dissolve back into this nothing and everythingness um of the void of life and let it let it show us you know what's the truth of the moment right now what's the true healing what's the forgiveness of how it wants to be coming through 
us and through our lives. <clears throat> okay, so the where I've gotten most of my information is uh, through I this book called Inanna, Queen of Heaven and Earth, which is where I got a lot of my information about Enki. Also, this book, <clears throat> Classical Mythology, A to Z, is just a very basic mythology book. And then I've had lots of conversations about Saturn with Heather Answorth, Ari Moshe Wolf, Kaylin Castell, Eric Roth, Sheridan Semple, Verena Burrell. They're, so all of those conversations are absolutely informing everything I'm saying here. And I want to acknowledge all of them. Plus, you know, Tatsi who's sitting here. And um, I've had just many, many conversations with people. And they're, I'm not the only one thinking these things or saying these things. There are lots of us all kind of collectively saying, hey, let's do this differently. So I include you all in that conversation also. Okay. So if we start with that first layer, right, the, the Greek Roman versions of what is Saturn, here are some images that I came up with on when I went to Pinterest, you know, looking up Saturn. So as we can see, it's typically this masculine, um, old man god figure and like this one on the left is uh, this baby is being punished and saturn is about to try to eat him <laughs> something something along those lines something violent and scary <laughs> not very fun um yeah so that's you know what i kind of came up with when i looked for images of saturn So Saturn in mythology <clears throat> is was an Italian fertility god, specifically having to do with fertility of agriculture. And he's associated with good social order, such as laws, writing, and coinage. Um, but interestingly, I didn't realize this, actually his ruling time was considered a golden age of peace and plenty because the social order was in place. If we switch then to the Greek mythology, Kronos is the equivalent of Saturn in Greek mythology. And um, Kronos was the son of Gaia or the earth and Uranus heaven. Kronos castrated his father to protect his mother. And then Kronos then dethroned his father and became king of the gods. Similarly, Kronos was then the father of Zeus who also dethroned Kronos. So it's like this lineage of violence and patriarchal um harm <laughs> lots and lots of harm okay so then if we go back a layer pre-roman greek mythology in sumerian mythology enki is a precursor to saturn and I find Enki really interesting. So Enki shows up, for example, in the myth of Inanna. And Inanna is a precursor to Venus, also a precursor to Persephone and Ceres. And lots of us are familiar with the myth of Inanna. I, I won't go into it in detail. If you're not familiar with it, um, be in touch with me and I can get you more information. But I just want to focus on the Enki version, the Enki portion of it right now. So, <clears throat> so in in Sumerian mythology, Enki was a water god and a god of wisdom. Uh, and in the Inanna myth, Enki, Enki as that god of wisdom is what sent um earth beings earth spirits down to the underworld to essentially save inanna who had been killed and was her corpse was you know hanging on a meat hook down in the underworld and the way that these earth spirits 
saved Inanna was by giving empathy to the being, the person who had killed her and was was now in labor, actually. So this is complicated. <laughs> How many details here? So so Inanna had been killed by Ereshkigal, who was then in labor and having horrible labor pains. And these earth beings went down to the underworld and just reflected to Ereshkigal her pain. They said, you know, she said, oh, my belly. And they said, oh, your belly. You know, they just were reflecting with empathy what she was feeling. And by the end of this story, uh, Eresh Gigal now felt um, relieved by this empathy and then essentially revive, uh, uh, let, let the, the earth beings take Inanna's corpse. And then Inanna was able to be revived and ascended back up to the upper world. So is really the wisdom of Enki through empathy that saved Inanna. So it's a really different feeling than the Kronos, especially the Kronos version of Saturn, but also the, just even the Saturn version of Saturn. Um, and to go a little more deeply into the imagery around Enki, there's this quote from this Inanna book, which I absolutely love. <laughs> so I'm just going to read the whole thing because I, I love this. And I think it gives a really good feeling of what Enki is about. The path to the great below is treacherous and often there is no return. Those who do return, such as Enki, the god of wisdom, become, become known as shamans and great magicians. They carry within them the knowledge of rebirth and often return, bringing their cultures a new world view. Inanna is queen of heaven and earth, but she does not know the underworld. Until her ear opens to the great below, her understanding is necessarily limited. In Sumerian, the word for ear and wisdom is the same. The ear, which is located mostly internally and is coiled like a spiral or labyrinth, takes in sounds and begins to transform the imperceptible into meaning. It is said of Enki, the god of wisdom and the god of the watery deep, who lives directly above the underworld, that his ears are wide open and that he knows all things. The moment Inanna opens her ear to the great below, her journey begins. So, yeah, I mean, that just feels so much about Enki being this being who who is kind of all present, like he can be aware and present of, of the, the upper world, the underworld, all at the same time. And he can have a sense of the wisdom of the whole cycle of life. <clears throat> and then he can also understand, you know, the depths of the sorrows and the grief, and then the joy and the abundance, um, and how they're all one whole. That's that's my takeaway from that. Okay. And then if we want to explore Saturn a little further, so we've done the Greek Roman version. Now we've gone back a layer to the Sumerian version. And then we come back to the reality that Saturn is an actual physical planet. <laughs> I feel like we sometimes forget that <laughs> when we're doing astrology, we just see this little symbol on a piece of paper, you know, I mean, I'm speaking for myself, <laughs> but it actually is, it exists. <laughs> it's really a thing. Um, so then, you know, so then there's the reality, you know, on a physiological level, Saturn has mass, Saturn has uh size saturn has energy saturn has vibration like anything else it's it's sending out vibration through all of existence just like anything just like we are um and so i also really love to just try to feel into the reality 
just like the sun. Okay. The sun is like an obvious example for us. We can, we know it's a real physical thing because we experience sunlight. We feel hot or without it, we feel cold. Um, we see its effect on life on earth very clearly. Well, why, why not the planets? The planets also have <clears throat> vibrations that would be hitting us, would be hitting the earth, just like sunlight is on a physiological level. So I just, I just love the experiment almost of going inside myself and really tuning into, okay, what, what is that maybe? What, how does that feel? And in a lot of um, more, you know, shamanic astrology practices, like Hen Heather Ensworth in the class that I'm taking with her, she has us journey to the planets. So one thing that I will share with you in a second is she also, there are certain, there are certain planets that uh, NASA has recorded the sounds of, which I think is really awesome to just listen to the sounds of Saturn, listen to the sounds of Jupiter, for example. And I mean, I don't think like on a logical level, it tells us anything necessarily, but on a different level, it's just a really beautiful experience for me to, to just be with that and see what arises. Um, yeah. So in a minute, we'll do that. So again, just talking about Saturn, the actual planet, <clears throat> Saturn is the, the planet in our solar system that was the most outer planet that was visible without a telescope. And so therefore Saturn is often associated with limits, boundaries, um, and it's, you know, it has rings. So that's also kind of emphasizes that sense of it having, be, being associated with limits and boundaries. It's also the second largest planet after Jupiter. But interestingly to me, also like Jupiter, it is a gaseous planet. So it's one of the, so Jupiter and Saturn are the two gas giants. Um, <clears throat> and it also, Saturn also produces a lot of heat, it gives off more heat than it receives from the sun, which I just think is interesting. Yeah. Okay. So just going back to this for one second. <clears throat> so when I, when I feel into the actual planet Saturn, um, in a minute, I'll let you just have your own experience with this, but something that I feel is really interesting is that again, it's gas. It's, it's not, um, a rock planet, right? So so we associate Saturn with limits and boundaries, but the reality is it's actually very soft. <laughs> like the actual physical planet is gas. Um, so when I've, you know, in the, in the course with Heather Ensworth and just on my own, when I've quote unquote traveled to Saturn, when I've let my consciousness be, imagine being with the actual planet Saturn I feel that gaseousness. I feel that softness. And um, yeah, it's just a fascinating thing to, to feel. What is the softness when we're talking about boundaries, when we're talking about structure, when we're talking about limits and authority and um, all the things we associate with Saturn? So I'm going to come to that more in a second i'm going to come back to the sounds of saturn in a second right so so for me and you know also through these conversations i've had with lots of these other people saturn which rules saturn rules capricorn and again we often think of saturn being associated with the more of the patriarchal versions of structure and boundaries and limits and all of that but um, Capricorn is actually a feminine yin sign. And similarly, what if we switch this around and think of Saturn as a yin soft being? Again, the planet is a gas planet. And 
yes, it is maybe associated with these limits, these boundaries. Um, but the whole mythology that was created around the god Saturn, again, was created in a time when uh, patriarchy was particularly alive and <clears throat> very violent and uh, very harsh. So if we are not particularly into the idea of our world being that way anymore, <laughs> what happens if we allow these stories to change with us, right? To, to morph and to listen to a different way of getting the wisdom of what, what is really needed in this time. Um, so yeah, what if, what if this is more of Saturn, like this image here on the screen? One of the ways that I come into a feeling of Saturn is this inner wise being who is precisely, subtly, you know, just like that, that, um, the idea that Saturn is a gaseous planet, like Saturn energy having this ability to be holding us, but very softly and wisely. Um, so kind of like, I get this image of like a grandmother with a, a mother who's pregnant, right? Like the, um, and this, this grandmother or this wise being comes and sits next to the mother with the baby in the belly and very gently puts her hands on the belly and is, you know, feeling just being with that baby. Like there's no need for harshness. There's no need for anything rigid or hard it's just a matter of being present and aware and infinitely loving and wise um so yeah what if what if that's how we thought of saturn and i think there are lots and lots of other ways that maybe we can shift this narrative and this way of being with saturn but but this is one image that feels really good and true and right for me And again, yeah, so we have Saturn <clears throat> about to enter Pisces. So, so to me, this is partly Saturn returning to source. This wisdom of what Saturn is kind of just being handed back over to the divine. And, um, and so what I would love to do now is take a few minutes and let us each, in whatever way feels right for you, to come back into letting Saturn dissolve into the divine and just feel what's there for you. So in order to do that, I'm going to play, let's see if it's going to work. <laughs> I'm going to play these sounds of Saturn. And then I think I'm going to mostly be quiet, but I'm going to, I'll start out by just helping us drop in and, um, and I'll lead us into a bit of a guided channeled meditation on Saturn and um <clears throat> yeah see what that feels like for you I'm curious <laughs> and if you want to share anything in the chat great also I definitely would love to have time for you to share out loud if you want in a minute after we're done So let me know if you can hear this. Can you hear that? Yes. Awesome. I'm not hearing anything. I'm You're not hearing anything either. You're not hearing it? No. Okay. Did you share it with sound, with audio? Um, honestly, I don't know.
Um, yeah, so that did not work. So we're, I'm just gonna put that in the, the link to the sounds to Saturn in this chat. Um, and then Sue is gonna include it in the notes for this video. Thank you, Sue. <laughs> All right. So instead of listening to the sounds right this second, I'm just going to lead us into a guided meditation. Um, and All right, so take a deep breath and come into our bodies. Feel our bodies sitting on the earth as part of the earth, not only on the earth, but actually we are part of the earth. Our bodies are made of the earth. And you can feel an orb of light descending over the front of your body. And this orb of light is surrounding you and filling you. And you can also feel the light of the heart of Mother Gaia at birth. Spark awake. Fill the whole body of Mother Gaia Earth. And then rise up over your body, surrounding your body, filling your body. And mixing with that light of the divine of source that's spilling down over the, your forehead and surrounding you. And then feel, feel the light of your own heart, spark awake, surrounding you, filling you, holding you, and mixing with the light of the heart of Mother Gaia Earth and the light of the divine, the light of source. And as you take some more long, slow, deep breaths, we can now take a little journey to Saturn, if you like. So again, take some more long, slow, deep breaths and just feel yourself, again, just as is right for you in this moment or any moment. Feel yourself rising slowly up out of the top of your head. You're still anchored here on earth. You're still safe. You're still held. Feel yourself rising all the way up through all the layers of the atmosphere of earth. You can see the moon. You can wave to the moon. You can see the sun. You can see Venus and Mercury between Earth and the sun. And then on the other, going the other direction, you can see Mars. You can see the entire asteroid belt and then Jupiter. Then take another deep breath and just feel yourself moving toward Mars, past Mars, past the whole asteroid belt. 
past massive Jupiter, gas, gaseous planet Jupiter with its moons. And then feel yourself coming to Saturn or Enki, whatever name, other names this being has. So this planet of our solar system is the second largest planet in the solar system other than Jupiter. And it has these rings around it. And it's mostly made of gas. It's giving off a lot of heat, more heat than it receives from the sun. And it's visible from Earth. So you can just take another few long, slow, deep breaths. And you can also feel how this, this being that we call Saturn usually is kind of an intermediary between the outer solar system that's not visible with the naked eye and then the inner planets that are closer by the Earth. So sometimes Jupiter is thought of as a protector. And one reason it's thought of as a protector is because its mass is so huge. Its size is huge, but also its, its gravity is so strong that it's helping to balance and keep the entire asteroid belt in orbit toward Jupiter and away from Earth and Sun. So you can feel how in a way, maybe Jupiter is like big arms of protection around the inner part of the solar system. And then this planet Saturn is the next one out from Jupiter. And again, Jupiter and Saturn <clears throat> both have this gaseous quality. They're both called the gas giants. We can just take a few minutes and be here, feeling the energy of Jupiter and Saturn, if you want, or just Saturn, or even just Jupiter. You can feel their presence, feel their vibration through your body, feel the quality, the qualities they bring to the solar system, to this whole galaxy, and really to all of existence. Just sit here and be with that for a moment, if you like. So in this moment that we're recording this video, 
Mercury and Saturn are both at 29 degrees of Aquarius. Mercury is just about to enter Pisces. And Saturn is going to enter Pisces next week. So they're about to re-enter the realm of the energy we associate with the everything and the nothing. The all that is, the void, the alpha and the omega, where everything comes from and returns. So they're about to return to that nothing and that everything. So as they're about to enter that everything and that nothing, if it feels right for you, and as it feels right for you, you can take another deep breath and set an intention in this moment or even in the future as Saturn journeys through Pisces over the next two and a half years. that maybe during this time, either for you on an individual level or us on a community level or us as a whole collective as a whole planet Earth, as all of existence, as this whole solar system and way beyond, maybe this is a time where we can forgive, release all these stories, associated not only with Saturn, but maybe all of our stories, all of the constructs associated with structure, societal norms, karmic history, karmic ties, stories of all kinds through every lifetime, through every dimension, throughout all of existence, layer after layer after layer after layer. We can just release it all back into the oneness, into the divine. And maybe that includes stories associated with patriarchy. Maybe this planet has medicine, has teaching, has wisdom. It is so far beyond patriarchy. It has existed way before patriarchy existed. So maybe this is an opportunity for us to let go of the stories we've associated with this planet. and everything that goes along with it. Give it all back to the divine and let this entity, this being speak and show itself and be the wisdom that we truly are and that it truly is, whatever that happens to be. Maybe the energy of this planet can help us remember a sense of being held, of being known, of being so infinitely loved, of being protected, of being in community and society with structures that serve us, serve our ability to be here in physical form in the solar system, on this planet Earth, in exactly the ways that we are meant to be as the infinite manifestations of the divine that we are and that these planets are, that the solar system is. 
that all of existence is. You can just take another few deep breaths and feel whatever is rising, feel whatever is maybe letting go, feel whatever is present. Anything that's wanting to be heard or spoken or felt or known. You can come back and do this meditation again as many times, anytime that you want. There might be layers of grief that need to move. There might be ecstasy. There might be confusion, a total unknowing. There might be incredible wisdom. There might be all of the above and so much more in any given moment. Just take another deep breath and feel yourself coming back through the solar system, past Jupiter, past that whole asteroid belt, including Ceres, Persephone, Lilith, Eros, Psyche, all of those asteroids coming back to Mars, And coming back past the moon and down through the atmosphere of Earth. Taking another deep breath and coming fully back, settling, grounded into your own Earth body as a being of planet Earth and the solar system and the divine and the light as you rooted here with the heart and the light of Mother Gaia Earth and the light of the heart of the divine of source and the light of your own being and your own heart. Grounded here, all as one, all the time. And so it is, amen. Okay, if you want to close that out, you could just take one more deep breath and bring all of whatever healing, feeling, live, learning, any love, light, gather it all back into yourself and seal it into your heart. Maybe give yourself a hug. Okay. Thank you to yourself for being here. Amen. Okay. Um, Judy, are you still hearing an echo? I'm just seeing your note here. Are other people hearing an echo? Yes. Yes, there, there is. Uh, I, I noticed it, but I didn't want to stop you. Oh, okay. Um, maybe. Oh, I don't know. Um, let me, let me stop. Is it still there? there? I think I might've, is that, is it still there? No, no, it's better now. It was very mild. So. Okay, good. I can, yeah, I, I know what it was. And out. if anybody wants to uh, share, they can raise their hand by uh, clicking on the reactions button and we can unmute you.
Yeah. Does anybody want to share anything about what that was like or anything at all? Okay, I see Ada and Brad both. So let me unmute Ada. Go ahead, you should be able to unmute. And Brad, I will do the same for you. Uh, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Um, Martha, thank you so much. Um, that I wasn't expecting to go so far out, but also so deep. And it was like as much as you were guiding out into space, I was there but also going within in this like center of both at the end what came up was just like my the depth of my power starts with Saturn and it was I'm also very Saturn based in my natal chart um and Saturn will be sextiling my ascendant and my own Saturn like all of these things so even just you channeling a Piscinian Mercury right now on the threshold of Saturn coming in um I'm so, I'm so, so glad that um, this is happening right now and I got to be a part of it. Thank you. Mm, you're so welcome. I love that. Um, there was something you said that I wanted to respond to and I'm trying to remember what it was now. Oh, the depth, Saturn being the, what did you say? The depth of, um, the depth of my power begins with Saturn. Yes. I was just going that far down like, oh, there it is. And also, oh, it's out there too. And just the space between the two being also in the same space. It was wild. Yeah. Yes. And, and Saturn is often associated with the first chakra. Yes. So maybe that's sort of what you're feeling. There. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know, among other things. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a, it got, yeah, it's very like, mm, 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 mm. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I love that. Thank you for sharing. Jewel. Yeah. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I'm getting all of these images of Saturn as midwife, as gatekeeper from source to earth form as the soul comes in from the cosmos. Uh, do you want to come up here? Can you hear me? What yes. was that? Yes. Oh, okay. As the soul comes in from there down to Earth form and it travels in, when it gets to Saturn is when it begins to encounter form. And it encounters form and we are actually instructed to hold that form lightly, gently always remembering our connection to the vine to form to formlessness to spirit mm -hmm. and so we have saturn again midwife gatekeeper from source to form but also back um and well, we've studied it as root chakra but i also know for, on, on some other somebody i don't remember who also has saturn rules the crown chakra so that it's the going back to source that it controls. So we hold lightly onto form so that we can let it go when we return. And we can even come back and forth, which is what we're doing now all the time. So giving the, the and that the, the, the gaseousness, the formlessness, the, the um, you know, the lightness of that, so yes, it, it helps us to come in through the root chakra, helps us to go out through the crown chakra and back. And I just, the, 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 that flow is, we so miss that, you know, through the patriarchy and so, which is all about form and substance and, you know, and yet, anyway, I just, I, I'm, um, that image, reclaiming Saturn as as this this old crone midwife who touches us coming and going and who is always with us and 
you know, this is, it's anyway, it's just, it's unbelievable how much there is to reclaim. Yes. Um, yes. And I'm loving what I'm seeing here in the chat too. Thank you. Uh, so, um, uh, Nancy is saying Jupiter is so huge. He wouldn't leave the view. So I embraced him. I love that. <laughs> I would love to hear more about that sometime, Nancy. And Jackie, first time I've voyaged into space. That was cool. Yeah. Um, and then Jeff, you have a quote here from Liz Green. Saturn is the dweller on the threshold, the keeper of the keys to the gate, and it is through him alone that we may achieve eventual freedom and self-understanding. Yes, and I, I want to read that book <laughs> that you recommended to me, Liz Green's book. Awesome. Do you mind putting the name of the book in the chat so other people can also access it if they don't already know it? And Irina, I felt something mighty. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so now to apply that, are we, Robin and Sue, are we still good on time? We're great. Keep, okay, awesome. keep, keep going. <laughs> okay. So I just have one more portion that I want to do, which is, uh, <clears throat> if we now apply that to our charts, right? Like our interpretation of this in our, in astrology, what does that do for us? <laughs> I think it makes a big difference. And I think it'll keep evolving. I mean, my experience of Saturn is absolutely, definitely evolving constantly. As Tatsi can attest, because I sent her all of my um, updates on <laughs> my current revelations about it. But, um, okay. And, okay. So Jeff is sharing the, the name of this Liz Green book, Saturn, A New Look at an Old Devil. I definitely need to read that. Thank you, Jeff. Okay, so I have a few of your charts here. I'm just gonna briefly look at them. Um, and as with anything and any chart, you know, there's infinite ways we could look at all of them. So I'm not gonna focus on all all aspects of them, but we'll we'll do the the gist or a certain aspect that I'm called to talk about. Um, okay, so in my own chart uh <clears throat> i just had i have my natal saturn at 11 leo so last year i had my sorry in 2021 actually i had my saturn opposition and um and currently as saturn is about to enter pisces it's going to be on my pisces mercury this year and so so just so everybody's clear saturn is is going to enter pisces on march 7th 2023 it will go to seven degrees of pisces and then it'll go retrograde at seven degrees of pisces then when it goes direct it'll go direct at zero degrees of pisces again so so it's this year 2023 it's only going to go from zero to seven degrees of pisces so if you have planets in that very very early those first seven degrees of pisces for sure saturn is going to go over them um but if you have planets in the rest of Pisces, such as my sun, which is at 14 Pisces, then Saturn isn't going to reach it this year. It'll reach it later next year and beyond. Uh, yeah. So, so in my own life, I've often noticed that I have, I have a, I have a square between Saturn and Uranus, but I really have a T square between Saturn, Mars and Uranus, right? So in a typical way of approaching Saturn, I could interpret that maybe to say, hey, I'm likely to have, to run up against issues with authority and kind of like, I might want to buck the system, which is actually true. <laughs> I've often been in my social work days, I was often the whistleblower and the the one who would say, no, <laughs> we can't do it like that. So that that dynamic has definitely been there. But I love the idea of um, of sitting with this softer, yin, gaseous planet version. You know, the wise, like you're saying, Jewel, the the wise midwife version of Saturn. So if I just take a deep breath and kind of sink into 
what that dynamic could look like for me. You know, again, I could spend probably years feeling into this for myself, but it, it really brings me back. My initial thought is it brings me back to the reality that I'm not here to buck the system. I'm actually here to hold space in community, Saturn in 11th house in Leo. I'm here to literally do what I'm doing right here on this call, right? I am I'm a midwife for us in, to be in community in a way that um, I'm not bucking the system. I am, I am in my, the Saturn squaring Uranus. I'm, I'm pushing the edges so that we can have a new conversation. So we can come more into like our, our, our focus can be more on what is the real true intelligence of the divine Uranus, as opposed to just sticking with the status quo. I'm not into the status quo, which you can see in my square with my Saturn squaring Uranus. I mean, I'm not, <laughs> it doesn't work for me a lot of the time, but at the same time, I am also, I see the wisdom in both in, in the grounded status quo and also in continually questioning, okay, is this truly in alignment right now? Is this truly the wisdom of the divine and where we need to be? And that's, that's a constant dialogue in myself. Um, so that's me. Oh, which symbol is Saturn? <clears throat> yes, great question. Um, Saturn is right here. It's this, it's this where my arrow is pointing right now. Can you see that, Jackie? Um, how do I describe that? <laughs> uh, it, it, my arrow is going right around it right now. And I will point to it on each of these that we look at. Okay. So Nancy, Nancy, so I just had my Saturn opposition. Nancy is about to have, yes, like the letter H with a cross on top. Thank you, Jeff. Yes. So, so Nancy, you're about to have a Saturn opposition also uh, because your Saturn is at four degrees of Virgo. So as Saturn enters Pisces, it will oppose your Saturn and then it goes, it's going to go retrograde. You know, you're going to have three passes of your Saturn opposition, which is typical. So, so yeah, I mean, again, it's like, <clears throat> I'm not exactly trying to have the answers here, but if we just sink into what does that Saturn opposition feel like if we're thinking of Saturn as this yin or midwife way of being, um, this inner wise, gentle, subtly aware energy. Um, you know, again, I can give an example from my own life last in 2021, when I had my Saturn opposition, what I ended up experiencing was this need to pause. And sometimes Saturn can be associated with just a slowing down um, to bring us back into alignment. And that is absolutely what I experienced. So it, it was this moment of like going from go, 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 go to I felt as the Saturn opposition was happening, suddenly I got this, this very clear directive. I needed to slow way down and even kind of stop. <laughs> um, which was confusing in a certain way, but if I now think of it, of Saturn as this wise inner being, now I look back and it was absolutely the wise, gentle thing to be doing for myself. Tatsi, what do you want to say? Go for it. Oh, um, you're still muted. Let me try to unmute you. Sorry, you're, you're muted. You're muted. You're muted. One second. <laughs> um, Sue, can you unmute? There you go. Cool. Okay, go for it. My question is actually general, so you can finish what you're saying about your own chart and come back to me. No, I'm good. Go, go well, for it. Mm -hmm. So my question is this. Traditionally, Saturn is thought of as the force of gravity, hmm. which is a yin thing. I mean, in drawing energy, whatever, like the attraction of a flower, but slightly different. And I was just wondering 
what you had to say about that because it's a gaseous planet, which in my mind wouldn't, wouldn't correlate with gravity. So I was just wondering what your whole take on that was. Well, I think physiologically, I bet you Saturn has a huge amount of gravity. I mean, Jupiter has an intense gravity, right? Um, so I don't know the physics of the makeup of those planets well enough to, I'm not a scientist, but, <laughs> but I mean, I do know that, um, you know, things with large mass are often, does anybody here a physicist? <laughs> anybody, can anybody answer this? Uh, yeah, I do know that Jupiter, Jupiter's gravitational pull is very, very, very strong. So even though it's a gaseous planet, so I'm guessing since Saturn is also huge, that it also has large gravitational pull. It okay. does. Um, it's actually um, got a magnetic pull, which is actually drawing in its rings. Ah, oh, okay. Interesting. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That totally makes sense. I mean, part of me was just going, is that an obsolete label or does it have some kind of significance nowadays yeah but, but yeah it does have gravity mm -hmm. in a and sense think, the way in a sense the way it's pulling in its rings it's now devouring the particles of its rings and in, in much the way that saturn in mythology ate its children hmm. okay interesting yeah well so even though it puts out heat which is a yang thing it's like pulling in this rings that has so much gravity that it's yin mm. to the max. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, you two. I was just <laughs> confused about that. It's like how 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 to hold that in my head. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think for me it also comes back to this this idea that um when we think of somebody something like gravity, I think it is natural for us to think that needs to be like lead, you know, something hard <laughs> in, right. order have, in order to have a pull inward like that. Uh, it needs to be intense, but uh, the reality is it's gaseous and has a really strong, you know, power inward like that. Interesting. Yeah. I hadn't thought of it like okay. that, but yeah, that is very interesting. Something well, to sit with. Thanks, you too. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think uh, your charts may be next, Tassie, oh. so oh, go ahead. Did you want to say something else? No, I was okay. just trying to lower my hand, but before I read it, I was like, <laughs> I hit it. Okay, well, guess what? Here's your chart. You're next. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so as you know, <laughs> but other people don't, um, you have just been having a major Saturn transit. Mm -hmm. so natally, you have Mercury opposite your Pluto. Right. Your Jupiter. Yeah. And Saturn just went over your Mercury and was opposing your Pluto and your Jupiter. Um, so, yeah, I mean, so again, you know, I just think it's really interesting to sit with this question of, okay, <laughs> we could experience that as a potentially really um, difficult combination, which it may or may not have felt like. <laughs> uh, and <laughs> which by the way, for every, everybody's, am I still unmuted? Yeah, for everybody's yes. edification, I've been, extremely ill the last month like a week and a half in the hospital kind of ill yeah which i didn't want to say publicly but now you did so you can share about yourself i'm not going to share about you yeah <laughs> yes exactly right exactly so i was sitting with that and i was feeling into okay so this has definitely been a really really challenging time for you absolutely no doubt um and you know I understatement exactly and yeah and yeah we've also looked at stuff with hygieia and chiron for you you know so i think there's like 
other things going on. It's not that everybody who has Saturn opposing Pluto is going to have a time in the hospital because that's a, that would be a generational. Right. It's, it's like a perfect everybody. storm. Yeah, right. So like not everyone your age will have just been in the hospital. That's that's not true. Right, right. Um, but yeah, so it's just this really interesting thing to sit with. Uh, if we conceive of Saturn as this wise elder being holding space, holding structure for you, having just passed over your Mercury in your sixth house, sixth house related mm -hmm. to health, related to body, Saturn is still transiting your sixth house, you know, and then opposing that Pluto and that Jupiter. Um, I don't know. Do you have any feelings or thoughts about that, Tatsi? How, how that can feel for you with this this being moving through all of that? It feels like the, the tide is going out now and I'm holding my breath metaphorically because I know that doesn't help me physically. Mm -hmm. um, until, for, for Saturn to like get into Pisces. Mm. So to have this cycle complete go away. Mm. And when Saturn goes retrograde, it's going to be exactly on your series, which I'm really Correct. curious. Yeah. I'm curious to see how that feels for you. Um, because series among many other things I associate with, you know, unconditional love, uh, being cared for, nurtured, that kind of that earth mother energy. And yeah. So, and to me very much feels like the higher octave of Saturn. Exactly. Yes. You've said that. Yes. And I would that. Yes, exactly. Right. So we'll have an update from you in a few months. <laughs> see, how that, see how that's feeling. <laughs> I'm definitely looking forward to that. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. So Jewel, you are next and you are um, having major Saturn transit coming up as well. This time, not so much the transiting Saturn, but more the, your, your natal Saturn is having a major transit, which is that um, the South node is currently at five degrees of Scorpio and your natal Saturn is at two degrees of Scorpio. So, so the South node, the transiting South node is about to be on your natal Saturn while Pluto is squaring, the transiting Pluto is squaring the transiting nodes of the moon and it won't, ex let's see. Yeah, well, anyway, it'll be basically within range of squaring your Saturn while it's also squaring the transiting nodes of the moon. So it's like this incredibly pivotal, like we've talked about this, like uh, this incredibly pivotal moment and time of, you know, the, the caterpillar, you as the caterpillar going into the chrysalis and having this opportunity to really change your whole relationship to to everything associated with Saturn in your, your being and your chart, um, yourself on a really, really, really deep level. You want to say something about that? Can you unmute? Now I did. Am I unmuted? Yes. Okay. I can't, it says you can't mute then it's I can. Okay. Yeah. No, thank you. That, I mean, yes, the transition is intense and i'm just one thing do you have the sacred star of fumaho up at two degrees three degrees of pisces i don't but um but we can pretend <laughs> all right well we can pretend yeah no no i mean because that from anyway from if i mentioned this but that three degrees now still about seven every 72 years whatever it is of Pisces forms a trine with my natal Saturn and my natal sun, right? At one degree of, um, is, is that true? Isn't my, my sun is at, uh, what is my sun at? 
Anyway, where is this? Ah, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Your son is at one degree of cancer. Uh, uh, right. And the, the Jupiter is at two degrees of Scorpio. And the Fumaholt is at three degrees of Pisces. So that's, isn't, is that like a grand trine? Your, yeah, your Saturn. So your, your Saturn square, uh, trines your sun. And then that right. would be also trining the Fumaholt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So All right. No, yeah. no, because that was, you know, searching for what it is that is coming out of this chrysalis. And I'm, I'm really learning patience, although I'm, sort of chomping at the bit you know those those parts of the the um imaginal just have come together and it's like hurry up already but anyway the um no and, and so it just it was dealing with being you know as a spiritual teacher which feels you know i've been thinking oh i have to learn these healing things and it's like I, no so anyway i just it, it's thank you i just it, it's the whole thing is contributing to knowing that i'm in the right place and just to stay in it until it's ready to get out so thank yes. you you're welcome okay jeff your turn um so in your case as you sh i'm sure you know because you know astrology very well uh so saturn rules your north node and your chiron and they are pretty close to each other there um and then similar to you and I, Jeff, you and I have identical same Mercuries at five degrees of Pisces. <laughs> so we're Mercury twins. And um, yeah, so you and I both are going to have Saturn transiting our Pisces in this coming year three times. Is there anything that you want to share about what you're feeling as you're listening to all of this? and? How you could imagine maybe that Saturn energy impacting you? Uh, sure. Um, I'm going to find it amazing that we both have Saturn conjunct, Saturn twins. And I told you, Dane Rudyard has Saturn at five degrees Pisces. Mercury, yes, Mercury. Mercury, yeah. Mercury, yes, yes. yes. Mercury. Oh, cool. And in my chart, I have Saturn in exa almost exact trying to my mercury so i'm interested to see as it transits our mercuries you know well what are that's going to trigger it'll be in trying to its natal position mm, so yeah. other than that I, I i have a fairly good connection to saturn and it, it in terms of my work it, it gives me in, in design and understanding systems a, a precision of thought and analysis so uh, structure i mean mercury and pisces is very amorphous and liquid and very good for imagination um, and openness and then i found that saturn gives a, a certain structure to that so i imagine triggering our when it comes i think both of us will feel a greater um, structure to our very open Mercury's. Mercury and Pisces is very artistic and very intuitive and um, has been known to have a photographic memory, very visual. So that's how I experience my Mercury and Pisces. And it'd be interesting to see again now um, when it crosses and um, conjuncts what I'll experience. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm just noticing that in this moment, the, the transiting south node of the moon again is at five degrees Scorpio. So it's, you know, it just passed over your sat your natal Saturn, but it's currently trining, exactly trining both of our natal Mercuries, um, which is interesting. And then, yeah, and you have, as you know, again, your Saturn is in your first house. So that whole quality of your own Saturn experience that you just described would be so key to your identity and just very present and alive which it sounds like it is um yeah thank you uh, just before i unmute um yeah. will you be also if there's time in this meeting tell us a little more about um pluto going into aquarius on the 23rd sure i can touch on it um for sure 
because yeah. I didn't even know that until you brought it up. And it's it's a fascinating. Um, I'm hearing this from a lot of other astrologers is major energies happening at the end of March and being triggered by that Pluto transit. Absolutely. The whole the whole the whole month of March is huge, gigantic. <laughs> yes, absolutely massive. Definitely. Um, cool. OK, so one more chart, Jackie. Uh, Jackie, okay, out of all these charts, I looked at this one and went, of course you want your me to look at your chart in this talk because um, you're not as familiar with astrology, but wow. Um, so anyone who is familiar with astrology, take a look at where Saturn is and Saturn and Mercury, which happen to be conjunct, of course, right now in the sky are sitting precisely on Jackie's North Node. <laughs> so, so fascinating uh yeah so you know again i don't have the answers here but the north node is has to do with among other things um kind of like gives our our soul direction like where are we trying to head in this life to in terms of integrating and balancing whatever energies that we're here to be integrating and balancing and healing so you have saturn and mercury sitting on your north node right now right this second and here we are here you are sitting at this talk about saturn <laughs> so i don't know i don't know what that means for you but i just find it really fascinating that you know there's something maybe in this time in your life where maybe there's structures coming in um Maybe there's a, a way like new, new forms that could be taking shape. I, I don't know. Is there anything going on that you want to share that's that you could imagine being related to any of these Saturn energies? And you don't have to share. It's totally up to you. Okay, finally. <laughs> oh, there, you there you go. I've been wanting to talk. <laughs> <laughs> You know, what you know of me, I, I can't not talk. <laughs> yeah, no, it's been uh, intense, to say the least. Mm -hmm. And it feels like I've got this, uh, if it really resonates strongly that I have Saturn, who is not my best pal. Um, and that's the kind of work, 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 strong, strong, because my natal um, Taurus it, my natal Saturn is in Taurus and I'm a Scorpio. So it's always been this kind of push pull, go work. And yet I just want to just chill and have a lovely time swimming around in Venus, Sun and Jupiter over in Scorpio. <laughs> so the Saturn thing is really strong and working with Mercury. I'm really asking to up my game in my communication, my written communication, and it's amazing. It's also very enlivening that it should be in my North Node. Wow, that's cool. And I'm actually noticing that your natal Mercury squares your nodes. So so this is fascinating. So it's not only that Saturn is on your North node, it's also Mercury conjunct Saturn on your North node. And then that is squaring your natal Mercury, right? So again, I don't know what the answer is here, but there's something being very highlighted for you around maybe communication structures with communication structures with like uh, again, I don't know if there's something specific that, that's okay. that you want to share. Um, interesting. It, well, it's not interesting at all, but I've had a lot of physical things happening. Like mm -hmm. I'm through the, the virtual world and where we communicate, I've had three different incidents of hacking and mm -hmm. bad stuff happening. Like, <laughs> and you know it's like as well as that uh communication i'm like oh god i'm afraid to but i have to bite my tongue all the time because i feel like i have to really measure out my words very carefully yeah 
Right. And and your Mercury is in Scorpio in your third house. Yeah. I mean, right. Like I again, I don't know, but um, <clears throat> Yeah, this would take like another hour probably, but mm -hmm. I wonder if there's, my instinct is, I wonder if there's a way to sort of infuse that whole dynamic going on with, again, sort of similar to how I talked about my chart, you know, that that some of those energies could be experienced as challenging, but if I kind of drop in and take a deep breath and mm. come into the the idea of the experience of Saturn being that gentle uh, holding energy mm. is, there, is there another way that these energies could move for you you know it precisely yeah. and that came to me uh it was like oh it's time to tidy up my house <laughs> <You know? laughs> mm -hmm. well it's good. yeah saturn is also going through your sixth house, <laughs> tidying <up> your house. <laughs> it's highlighting yeah. a certain thing about oh time to Marie Kondo my things and and uh -huh. also in terms of security and safety and structure and yeah and my physical issues and so on it was good it thank you for that that is a beautiful beautiful uh encompassing wave of love from Saturn thank you mm -hmm. yay <laughs> thank you for yeah. being here Okay, so yeah, um, I think we have covered a lot of this, but yeah, I think there's just so much there, so much more that um, we can glean from all of this. And I would love to keep hearing from you all, those of you here and those of you listening anytime in the future. And over the, again, this is, you know, Saturn's going to be in Pisces for the next two and a half years. And Saturn's always going to exist even when it's not in Pisces. So <laughs> at any time, I would love to see what arises about this wisdom of this being in our solar system and who is us. Um, and just Jeff, to <clears throat> before I close out, uh, yeah, in terms of Pluto moving into Aquarius, I mean, that is huge. And I do have on my own YouTube channel, um, recently I've been doing some videos where I talk about it. So you can definitely go to my YouTube channel, Living the One Light. Uh, but on a basic level, in the month of March, Saturn Saturn will enter Pisces, and then on March seventh, and then Pluto will enter Aquarius on uh, March twenty third. And actually, I recently, a month ago, did a talk on the asteroid Eros, and in there, I talk a lot about Pluto entering Aquarius because when Pluto enters Aquarius. It will be conjunct the asteroid Eros and pretty close to the asteroid Hygieia. So among a bazillion other things, I feel like this energy of Pluto entering Aquarius, also while it's it, it's squaring the nose of the moon, is an opportunity and a time for us to uh, dissolve, reimagine, um, transform, transform is the best word, transform our relationship to life force energy, our bodies, healing, um, and also, you know, Pluto moving into Aquarius, start to get a glimpse into how can we transform these, our relationship and the power within this Aquarian way of being, or the more things associated with Aquarius. So so Pluto is only going to go into zero degrees of Aquarius this year, and then it's going to go retrograde. So it'll barely, barely peak into Aquarius in 2023. It'll go retrograde, and then um, and it'll go back into Capricorn. And then it'll go, it's going to basically be straddling Capricorn and Aquarius for the next year and a half-ish. Uh, and yeah, there's that's like big topic but definitely go to my youtube channel follow it and i i would love to hear from you with other questions and i can keep answering more um and then i just want to share a little bit about uh any some other things i'm doing oh and jackie uh jackie you're saying saturn has been the mother in your experience mother was moon in capricorn yes 
huge respect, but tough love. Mm -hmm. I can see that. Um, yeah. So in terms of connecting with me, I tomorrow have a deep peace and healing session. I have these once a month. I have lots of other gatherings, but that one happens to be tomorrow. If you happen to want to come to that, that's so the first Friday of each month. That's, that's where I hold space more in that channeled healing way, similar to today, but you know, not only about Saturn, just, just in general. So you can just relax, be in the arms of the divine, etc. Also, a big component of my work is in the trauma and having a trauma informed basis to everything I do. So I just this Tuesday held a workshop, which is now available online indefinitely because it, it was recorded on the trauma informed basics for astrologers and healers. And there were several people there live and it was really, really wonderful. And so definitely if that calls to you, please reach out. It exists. Um, I'm also doing this year-long goddess series with Verena Borel, where we approach the many of the goddess planetary bodies in a similar way to what we just did with Saturn today. And it's wonderful. We're in month two of that, but you can join anytime. And again, the group of people who have converged are amazing and several of you are here and it's such a pleasure to be part of it with you and then i want to share with you this new thing that i have put together which is um something called the Div divine peace garden collective and so this is a group of 10 of us there are nine other people who i called together who each several of these people are are licensed psychotherapists and then there are other healers and other types of practitioners, um, all dedicated to helping to relieve anxiety, depression, and help us to heal our nervous systems. Cause I feel like actually Pluto moving into Aquarius is, you know, there's a really, really strong need right now. That's a big directive I get from the spirit world is that we need a lot of support to help us come out of fight or flight mode and come back into a healing way of being with our nervous systems and our bodies. So I've called together this group of beautiful humans and we have a online retreat coming up at the end of March on March 24th, which also will be recorded. We have sliding scale fee. So lots of different options for, um, for joining that in an affordable way. And if you need a scholarship or whatever, please reach out to me because this is, I, I just want to make it accessible to people. Um, and then this is a plug for something coming up in June, which will be free, which is Rebecoming the One 2023. So last year I hosted uh, Rebecoming the One Part One, which had 42 speakers and et cetera. And so a speaker series focused on healing of our relationships to gender, sexuality, love, and life itself. Um, and a lot of the conversations in there are similar to this one about Saturn. So this year, there are going to be many, many, many amazing speakers, including Heather Ensworth, Ari Moshe Wolf, um, Melanie Reinhardt, uh, on, on and on. I mean, Verena Burrell, just lot, lots of astrologers and then non-astrologers, all of whom are wonderful. So if you're interested in that, sign up for my email newsletter if you're not already on it. And I will give more updates as we get closer to that time. It will be free and available to everybody. Okay. Anything else before we close out? And yes, I love Ari too. <laughs> he is awesome. Martha, you do have one raised hand. Ada, oh, Ada. Yeah. did you have something else you wanted to say? Let's see. Oh, let me... Uh, now, now try. Does it work? There you ah. go. Sorry, I realized that was up from a while ago. Um, I regret not sending my chart in. So I was curious to ask if I could follow up with you for a quick chat about uh, Saturn. Yeah, yes, I can't offer to do that for everybody for free. <laughs> so I just no, yeah, but I was like, oh, why did I send it in? I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but yes, yes, I would love to look at your chart. Um, and I will be doing one more free talk for EA Zoom 
on uh, um, a month from now, the beginning of April, and that one is going to be on Eris Zena. I'm super excited about that one. <laughs> so that's another one where I, I want to like rethink how we're approaching it. And that's very inspired by Heather Ensworth. Um, but I would love to look at your chart for that one also, if you want, but certainly yes, email me yeah. and I'm happy to talk. Okay. <laughs> Thanks so much. <laughs> Anything else? Thank you, Martha. Yeah. That Thank was you. awesome. And we look forward to next month. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Martha. Thank you.